Well, hello there, and again, welcome to another edition of Biblical News Updates and Commentary. You know, many of you are probably hearing a lot of news and perhaps even developing some concern over the buzz that you're hearing within the economic community. The buzz about suspicions and even perhaps to a certain degree paranoia over the fact that there's going to be another economic collapse. And many are talking about the fact that it'll be greater in scope and size than what we experienced in 2008. Some are saying this one is going to be of a worldwide scale. Now there's a lot of reasons for this, a lot of things that feed into the cause of individuals thinking along these lines. But one major reason that is feeding this line of thinking is the fact that people are concerned over the idea that the U.S. dollar might get pushed out of the saddle from being the world's standard reserve currency. That's right, my friends. People are looking at an $18 trillion debt with $97 trillion of unfunded liabilities, along with the fact of a consumer's market that is in decline with consumer spending and jobs, and considering the fact that, you know what, when you put all that together, what that portrays is an investment with diminishing returns. Therefore, nations are concerned. Emerging markets like China, Japan, Russia, Brazil, even the Eurozone, organizations like the IMF are all concerned that the United States may not be able to maintain its preeminent position as the world's standard reserve currency. So guess what they're doing? <laughs> they're using their own currencies. That's right. China and Russia are actually trading with each other using their own currency. China's buying oil using its own currency from the United Emirates. That's right. And there's even talk about the fact that a deal was cut f with both Russia and China to buy oil. That's right, buy oil from the Saudi Arabia with their own currency, which, by the way, would be violating the 1973 agreement that the United States has with Saudi that anybody buying oil from them must convert to dollars. But that's another story. The point of this is, though, a lot of the, what I'm talking about is illustrating the global community is losing confidence in the dollar and consequently are looking for other options to be considered. Nations that were buying up our debt are no longer buying up our debt at the volume and at the size and scope that they were before. I mean, China's already holding $1.3 trillion of treasuries and associated and assorted bonds. Japan is not far behind with $1.2 trillion uh, of debt that they're holding in the form of U.S. Treasuries. Between the two Asian countries, $2.5 trillion of U.S. debt they're holding and consequently are concerned about the fact very concerned about the fact that they might be caught holding a lot of paper currency that is worthless due to some kind of, at best case, economic downturn, worst case, a default on the whole U.S. debt. Let me read you something here that I got off of Wikipedia here the other day, most recent, and I want to just quote this real quickly here from the National Debt of the United States off of Wikipedia. Quoting now, very current numbers, on June 30th, 2015, that's just a couple of months ago, debt held by the public in the United States, by the way, was $13.08 trillion or 74% of the previous 12 months of the gross uh, GDP. Intra-governmental holdings stood at $5.07 trillion, giving a combined total public debt of $18.15 trillion, or, are you ready for this? 102% of the previous 12 months of GDP. It's growing. Nobody is saying no. I continue with the quote. 6.2 trillion of approximately 40 or approximately 47% of that debt, that 18.15, 6.2 trillion is 47% of that debt held by the public was owned by foreign investors, the largest of which is the People's Republic of China and Japan, 
at about $1.3 trillion and $1.2 trillion, respectively, for both countries. So here in this particular case, you see what I'm talking about. A lot of countries are very concerned about the fact of being held, caught, so to speak, with a lot of paper currency that due to an economic downturn or default on the debt would be a tremendous loss for their investment. And so other avenues are being explored. I don't need to remind many of us here listening or watching this particular presentation that the euro was considered to be the fair-haired, legitimate, possible replacement of the dollar as the world's standard reserve currency. But quite frankly, the euro has as much, if not more, risk and jeopardy that it's facing as a result of the weakening economies of Greece and Spain. Portugal, Ireland, they're all pulling on the euro and consequently causing a lot of tension and a lot of pressure to the point where many of you have seen, as I've seen, the euro falling in its value. At one time it was a dollar fifty-five to the dollar. What is it today? About a dollar ten or a dollar eleven to the dollar? It's dropped so much over the last half a dozen or so years that it is amazing. Uh, that that has happened. So many nations are now using and accepting their own currencies around the world and this is causing quite a bit of confusion and a bit of chaos. As a result, there is good reason for a lot of suspicion surrounding this upcoming scheduled five-year meeting by the International Monetary Fund, or better known as the IMF. That's right, Christine Lagarde, who is the chief there at the IMF, is going to be organizing her scheduled five-year meeting, but this meeting is rather curious, simply because there are some rumors swirling in the backdrop about the possibility of allowing China to come into the fraternity of the four currencies that are used for averaging the IMFs, the International Monetary Funds, quasi-currency slash voucher known as Special Drawing Rights or SDRs. Now this presents an interesting and curious thought and idea about the whys and wherefores of this consideration by Ms. Lagarde. Because very simply, the fact of it is allowing the yuan, China's currency, to be included in the averaging with the yen, the dollar, the euro, and the sterling to come to the equation of the value of the SDR provides some, well, certainly plausible suspicion that perhaps this might be a beta test initiative of launching, exploring, initiating, and investigating the possibilities of a global currency. A lot of people are beginning to think this. And with the idea, of course, of dethroning the dollar. Could this be a possibility? Well, hey, stay tuned because there's a lot of scenarios, quite frankly, that we could talk about and extrapolate from a lot of the circumstances and situations that we find ourselves surrounded by. But look, what am I talking about? What I'm saying is that it's obvious, is it not? The global community of nations, my friends, is losing confidence in the U.S. dollar and for good reason. They're exploring, investigating, they're holding meetings, writing reviews, prodigious amounts of studies and papers are being written, exploring the options, the alternatives, what other concepts and or ideas could be deployed and implemented that would present us a legitimate and reasonable replacement of the U.S. dollar as the world's uh, uh, currency, the standard currency. Look, any nation that is a loaner, that's right, nations that loan money, it's obvious, are in a stronger position. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you rather be a loaner than a borrower? Of course, the borrower is subject to the loaner. 
Your Bible has something very important to say about this. I want to turn your attention over here to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, this is an interesting chapter in your Bible. It's called the chapter, many know it, know it by, being uh, labeled the blessings and cursing chapter. It goes down here through uh, a litany of items in verses 1 through about 14 of blessings. And it lays down the stipulation in verse 1 that in order to go ahead and qualify for these blessings that are listed in these first 14 verses of chapter 28 in the book of Deuteronomy is stated as such, And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and do all His commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. That's right. Over here, dropping down to verse uh, 12, uh, And the Lord shall open unto you good treasure, His good treasure, the heaven, uh, to give the rain unto the land in His season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend, you, Israel, shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. Interesting terminology. Because as you come down here to verse 15, you read, But it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe to do His commandments and His statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. And he goes down here listing curses to this nation Israel who had adopted the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that goes to the point that any nation that adopts the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is accountable to that God. So I would suggest, my friends, that we take a very serious consideration of these items in this chapter and take them to heart because they certainly are very well suited to be taken personally for our country, especially in light of the fact that as you read through these, this chapter and these verses, that there are so many familiar, familiar Par parallels of things that you and I are experiencing all around us in our USA culture today. And I hearken to this to bring your attention to verse 43 under the cursings where he says, remember, if you don't follow me, this is what will happen. And he goes down through from verses 15 through the rest of the chapter talking about the curses, but breaking into the context in verse 43, we say, we state, the stranger, that is the foreigner among you in that country, the stranger that is within you shall get up above you, very high. You shall come down very low. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. You shall be in debt to him, is what we're being told here. He shall be the head. You shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed. My friends, another financial downturn, financial storm is brewing. The clouds are beginning to gather. It's obvious that there is definitely something building. There is thunder out in the distance, or perhaps maybe it's horse hooves coming closer. But the fact of it is, a collapse is on the horizon. You can see how this is happening. You can't print all this money without having some piper to pay. You can't keep kicking the can down the road and expect the possibility of being able to get away with it. At some point, a debt service economy comes to an end. Even Rome understood that. Rome found that out very, very clearly. And as Detroit realizes it, California and Greece 
Portugal, Spain, and Ireland, to a lesser degree, are all experiencing it as well. And also, these debt-ridden, godless, driven, neo-heathen cultures cannot continue to go on the way they're going without some kind of price to be paid. And when the too large to fail, fail, the house of cards will indeed come down. My friends, won't you let us help you to better understand this particular subject? Get us on the web right now at www.cgi.org or email at info at cgi.org and request this free offer that we have for you. It's a one-hour presentation titled America's Disturbing Future. It's going to go into a lot more detail than what I have been able to do in these 10, 15 minutes of talking with you. Specifics right from your Bible of things that are scripted to occur to a nation that has adopted the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of which the United States, and frankly all of North America, has done along with England and the rest of many of the Commonwealth nations. You need to have this information to help you better prepare mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Go ahead, hit us on our website at www.cgi.org or email us at info at cgi.org. My friends, this is Bill Watson reminding you again always you've got an open invitation to visit us here at Biblical News Updates and Commentary. 